Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of Vool, and in this video we're going to talk about an add-on that's going to help you deform your objects. So the add-on we're talking about today is Simple Ben from Kashuro. He does a range of fantastic add-ons and this is no exception. It adds some really useful bending functionality to Blender, and not only that, within it he deals with a lot of potential problems that you might have. So let's have a look at exactly how this works and what it can do. So before we go any further with this, I think it's important to mention you can bend objects in Blender without using an add-on like this. So what I've done is taken a cube, scaled it in a few directions, and then we've just broken it up by using Ctrl and R to add in a lot of edge loops. Now what I'm going to do is Shift and D and just create an extra one of this so we can talk about this later. But first let's take a look at how we can do this in Blender without using any add-ons. Now we're going to go to Item and we're going to firstly sort out the scale because we scaled this, so Ctrl and A and Scale. And then we can go into our modifier panel over here and add in a simple deform modifier. We can change that to bend and then we want to do this in the z-axis and it's still not looking right even though we've got all of these vertices and edge cuts in place. And that's the first problem with this tool is that it wants to run off a specific axis. So what we actually want to do is change this to be on the x-axis. So I'm going to just R and then 90 and then I'm going to control an A and apply the rotation. Now this will start to work, but it means you've kind of got to get everything to this place, scale it, bend it how you want, and then move it back. It's really tedious. It's not the nicest function to be able to use. The other thing is that it does some things in a way you wouldn't expect. So for example, if I, let's say, select these, and I just want to bend this part, not the flat edges either side, we can do that with this restrictions. What we need to do is come in here, create a vertex group, assign it, I'm always going to deselect and then select it to check that's working, go back to the modifier and then select the vertex group where you want this to work, except for it's now done this, which is not probably what we wanted to happen. We wanted to have this bend round and then the other parts remain straight. So again, it just doesn't really do what we want it to do in a number of different ways. So let's just get rid of that and let's have a look at how simple bend will make this easier. Now firstly, Notice that I haven't applied the scale yet. This is going to cause a problem, but simple bend will make this really easy to see. So we want to go into face mode. There is another way of doing this, but face mode is probably the one you generally want to use. We'll talk about the other method later. I'm going to hit A to select everything, and then right click and go to simple bend. And straight away you get these icons, and we can see how distorted these icons are. They should all be the same size. This is simple bend's way of showing us that our scale is messed up. We could still work with it this way if we wanted to, but it's not going to work exactly the way we might expect. So I'm going to escape out of that, go into object mode, control and A, and apply the scale. So we need to start with that same step anyway. It's just that Simple Bend gives us an indicator to let us know that we're going to do something that's going to cause a problem. So let's right click, and then we'll go to Simple Bend again. We get these, and you'll see that now all of these axes where we can deform from are the same size. And then we just pick our axis and we just fix it. Now we've got the degrees, you can see that they're changing as I move the object. And you can also hold down shift if you want to change it to five degree increments. So for example, we can go to minus 180 and notice nothing is confirmed, so we can still move around and change things if we want to. I'm just going to put that back to the 180 and then it's Q to confirm. I would rather that it was spaced to confirm, I don't know why they did that, but that's the way it is. And then we've got this nice C shape. So a really useful add-on. The other thing we can do if we just get rid of this is we can do probably what we'd expect to be a more understandable result if we select these points here and then once again right click and simple bend, we get it bending along those points but the other ones remaining flat. This is more what we expected or I would argue we expected to happen. When we created a vertex group earlier, it just didn't work. So a really nice tool. Now the other thing we can do, which is great, is we don't have to flex it in this way. If you press C, then it will change the way it flexes. So for example, if I press C one time, it will leave one section as it was, and then just flex the other one. Or we can press C again, and it will do it the other way around. Or finally C again, and then it's flexing both of them. It's like we're folding something in half. And again, you can just keep flicking through as you choose to. So a really, really nice add-on in terms of this functionality. And then Q to confirm. So even if it just did this, I would say that's pretty nice. But it actually adds a further level of control that we can add in if we want to. Right, let's just undo this. And we're going to bend it again. So right-click and simple bend. 
along here and let's just change that to C. So we're gonna do there and let's just go to 45. So somewhere about there. Q to confirm. And then let's say we want to flex another point up here. So let's just select some faces here. Something like that. And then we want to bend this. Now this is gonna lead us to have a slight problem. So once again, we're in face mode, right click, simple bend, and you'll see that it's trying to work off the standard axes that we've got, our global axes. And this makes sense normally, but if I try to flex it this way, you're gonna notice that we start having some issues. Or if I just escape out of that, and we'll try that in a different way, let's try these ones. We can get again this sort of working, but it has some problems. It's not doing what we'd expect to do because it doesn't quite understand what we're trying to tell it because this isn't at a 90 degree angle. It's not on the X, Y, or Z axis. So instead, what we can do is go into edge mode. Now, what this does, we still keep the faces selected that we wanted to have doing the deformation, but this time we're gonna unselect two of the edges and then we're gonna reselect them. Now, this has to be in a specific order. We firstly select one in the direction of the way the mesh is, I guess the word would be flowing. So it's flowing in this direction. So I want to click that so that it confirms that flow direction. Then I want to confirm the axis, I want to bend across. So I want it to bend in this direction. Now in most instances, that actually won't matter too much. I could have probably done those in the other order here and it wouldn't have made a big problem because I can just change the axis that I'm gonna deform along by hitting W. But if I right click and come down and go simple bend, you'll see now we don't get the choice of the axes, but it's bending around those two points, which is really handy. We can press C still, so we can go to the other side or have both of them. So we don't lose any of that control that we might have wanted. We can press W to change the axes that we're working in. So for example, we could go there, but this is what I wanted. So we're gonna go there, I'm gonna shift and go to 45, and then we've got this perfect sort of elbow turn. And no strange deformation because we've got this customizability using those edges. And to me, this tells me a lot about this add-on and how well it's been thought out. I'm not surprised coming from Kashiro. He has some absolutely amazing add-ons, but just little bits like that are a really nice touch. Now let's say that we actually wanted this to be, I don't know, let's say an armor panel around something. I'm just gonna R and then 90 to have it there. And then let's just go into face mode. E to extrude that out a bit further. So say this is a armor panel that we wanted. Let's make, no, we'll keep it that way. I was gonna say we could make that less extreme, but either way, it doesn't really matter. So what we're gonna do is just go into face mode, select that face, shift and S, and I'm gonna bring the origin to that face. And then Alt and X, change that pivot from the cursor to the active origin. And then let's do that across there. And then we can S and then X to scale that up on the X axis. So this is gonna be some sort of armored pad on. Let's go with somewhere around there. Then I'm gonna go into edge mode, control and R. We'll put in a load of edge loops here. And then we're just gonna go into face mode, A, and then I want this to have a curve to it. Let's say that this was going on something that's, I don't know, a cylinder. Let's just shift A, mesh it, and bring in a cylinder. Let's just alternate, bring that over there. And then let's G and then Z that down, and let's S and scale that up. So let's say we had something like this. Let's go to those edges there, there, control and B. And we've got that there. And we want to have some sort of other external armor panel. That's just G and then X that across to, I don't know, there seems good. So I want to have this bit that's flat and the rest is gonna curve round. So let's go into face mode. I'm gonna select all of those faces. This is the bit that I want to remain flat. And then I'm gonna right click and go to simple bend. Oh, we haven't applied the scale. Notice how quickly it showed us that. I'll just show you one more time. There we go. It's not uniform. So we're gonna go into object mode, control and A and apply the scale. Then go back into face mode, right click, simple bend and then we want to bend it in this direction. So we're just gonna to go to about there. Now we could be doing this differently. So say we had it there or in the middle, but no, this has actually done it exactly the way we wanted to. Let's flex it to about there and then Q, and then we've got that sorted. And we've got our nice armored, I don't know, let's say this is gonna be a wheel. This would be the protection for that wheel, something like that. 
Now, just to be clear about this, there are other ways we could go about this. We could be doing things here using the spin tool. I'll put a link to a video in the description about the spin tool, but just the way that I like thinking, I do like creating a larger object and then modifying it as opposed to going bit by bit by bit, which is how you'd use the spin tool. And I do feel this just gives a lot more control and a lot more customizability. Hopefully you're gonna find that useful. If you do, there is a link to that add-on in the description. It is an affiliate link, which means it costs you no more to purchase through it, but it does give a little bit of money towards the channel, which helps support the channel and keep it going. If you did enjoy the video, please do hit the like button. If you're not subscribed, subscribe for more great content. And the channel does have a Patreon page. There's a link in the description. And for a few dollars a month, you can get these videos ad free a week ahead of time. And other great perks, including getting 3D models if you sign up to that tier. Have a great day, guys.